Goodbye, friend. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Jim. Hello, Joanne. Come, let's go. Joanne, have you heard about this Society of Jesus? Hmm. I think I've heard of them. I think they are a society within the Catholic Church. Why did you ask, Jim? Hmm. Nothing. I found their name printed on one of our textbooks. That's why. Let's ask Uncle Francis about it then. Yes. Now how about we find out who reaches home first? Hee <laughs> hee. You know you can't beat me, Jim. I do. Come on. Shows are boring on TV. I know. Ever since Uncle started telling us the story of saints, all other stories sounds boring to me. Hehehe, <laughs> that's true. That must be Uncle Francis. I'll get the door. Good evening, Jim. Good evening, Uncle. Come on, and Uncle. Uncle, I have to ask you something. Go on, Jim. What is a Society of Jesus? What do they do? I found their name in one of my textbook. Hmm. The Society of Jesus, more commonly known as the Jesuits, is a society within the Catholic Church. Who started this order? The order was started by Saint Ignatius of Loyola, a priest and a theologian. Saint Ignatius of Loyola? Hmm. I've heard about him. Didn't he start something called spiritual exercises? It's wonderful that you remember this, Joan. Yes, he is remembered as a talented spiritual director. He recorded his method in widely renowned spiritual exercises, a simple set of prayers, meditations, and other mental exercises. Wow! Oh, can you please tell us his story, Uncle? Of course I will. Now listen carefully. Ignatius, whose real name was Inigo Lopez, was born in 1492 in a small village called Loyola, at the southern end of Aspatia. Inigo was the youngest of 13 children. His mother died when he was just seven. And he was then raised by Maria de Garin, who was the wife of a blacksmith. His last name, Loyola, was taken from the village of his birth. Inigo was a member of the local aristocracy and was raised accordingly. He was an ambitious young man who had dreams of becoming a great leader. He was influenced by stories such as The Song of Roland and El Cid. Come on, Inigo. Let's go to the fields. All right. What were you reading? It was a song of Roland. It's about an epic battle that took place years ago. Ha ha ha. Why are you reading those old books? It's such a waste of time. No, my friend. I'm going to be a great soldier. Maybe even a knight one day. Ha ha ha, that's such a stupid idea. Stupid? I don't think so. Come on, friends, it's already late. We have to rush now. Okay, now let's see who can catch up with me. I'm going to beat ya. When he was 16, he started working for Juan Velasquez, the treasurer of the castle. Inigo, hand over this file to the assistant treasurer. Yes, master. Nigo served as a page for the treasurer, and he was frequently at the court around rich people. It was here that he developed a taste for the material things of this world. He used his time and talents for his own glory and not much else.
The employment didn't last for a long time, though, and eventually he became a soldier in the Spanish army. He had by now changed his and eventually he became a soldier in the Spanish army. He had by now changed his name to Ignatius. Whatever happens, do not let them through. Are you ready? Yes, yes. We'll fight till we die. Ignatius had won many battles for the Spanish army, but he got terribly wounded in this fight against the French. Master, Master, are you all right? Ah! Help! Somebody help! Ignatius was injured very badly that day. The cannonball had shattered his leg and the bones were protruding out. But as always, Ignatius was brave. He was strong during the painful journey back home. Ah! Ah! Ignatius, wake up! Ignatius! Huh? <laughs> there you are! Thank you for saving me, Doctor. Don't thank me yet. There is some good news. And I'm afraid I may have some bad news for you as well. What is it, Doctor? Good news is that your leg has finally started healing. We think you will be able to start walking in a few days' time. Wow! That's wonderful, Doctor! Did you hear that, my friend? And what's the bad news? Uh, one of the bones in your broken leg is sticking out and it has formed an ugly bump just under your knee. Will I be able to walk? Yes, yes. But I'm afraid one of your leg is shorter than the other one. So you will have a slight limp while walking. Oh, no. Don't worry, Ignatius. It's a miracle that you are alive now. You should thank God for that. Don't worry, my friend. You will be all right. And that's it. Thank you for lying still, Ignatius. That's all right. Sister, can you do me a favor? What is it? You must know that it's quite boring to lie down here with nothing else to do. Could you get me some books to read? Mm, let me see what I can do. We don't have a library here, but the head nurse has a habit of reading and she must have something. I'll go and ask her. Thank you, sister. Also, if you don't mind, it would be great if you can get me some books and romances of chivalry. I really enjoy reading those. I don't think the head nurse would be having such type of books. Anyways, let me see. Hello, Ignatius. How are you today? I'm fine, sister. Did you get the books I had asked for? Mm, I'm sorry, Ignatius. The head nurse didn't have the books you had asked for. She only had these with her. I took them anyway as I thought you'll have something to read. That's all right. Thank you so much for the help. The sister gave Ignatius two books. One was about the life of Christ and the other was a collection of saint stories. The life of Christ? Uh, I'll start with this one. De Vita Christi, or The Life of Christ, was one of the famous books on the teachings of Lord Jesus during those times. This book would inspire Ignatius for years to come. Wow, that was, that was amazing. I should start with the other one too. Ignatius then started reading the other book, which had a collection of saint stories. He was struck by the great sacrifices that the saints made for God. He was overwhelmed by their love of Jesus. Huh. What am I doing with my life? These people... They did so much good during their time on earth. And me? What have I done so far?
As Ignatius continued to heal, he started reading more and more books about the teachings of Jesus. He also started praying seriously. God's peace filled his heart and assured him that he was on the right path. By the spring of 1522, Ignatius had recovered enough to leave the bed. Hello, brother. Me, sir? I want to give you my clothes, sir. Will you accept them? Of course, sir. May God bless you. Here you go. Now all of my clothes are yours now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lord. May God bless you, son. And then he went to the Benedictine Monastery and he laid down his sword and his armor. God, that's all what I have left of my previous life. I will be a new man from now onwards. Thank you for showing me the way. He then walked to a hospital in the town of Manresa. In exchange for a place to live, he performed work around the hospital. In order to live in absolute poverty, he even begged for his food. Ignatius used to spend most of his time in a cave nearby. When he was not working or begging, he would go into a cave and practice spiritual exercises. He used to practice for more than seven hours a day. His time in prayer and contemplation helped him to understand himself better. He also gained a better understanding of God and God's plan for him. The next year, in 1523, he made a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Ignatius wanted to stay in the Holy Land for the rest of his life, but circumstances forced him to return after a fortnight.